I looked at my watches and I noticed they fell into a few different price points, which led me to think about watches as gifts or straight up purchases for oneself at these price points now that we're in the Christmas season. So whether you decide to treat someone to a watch or buy one for yourself, I wanted to discuss some of my watches. All these recommendations are based on new prices and are watches that are available. That eliminates Rolex. Certain sports models from Patek like the Nautilus and my own Audemars Piguet Royal Oak which have waiting lists. I could get ultra granular, but here are some categories I thought of. Sub $250, sub $5,000, over $5,000. I picked these categories because these are categories people actually shop in, it seems. I know there are the five to 10,000 and 10 to $20,000 categories. That could be a lot more fun to make a video in, but realistically, these seemed like the most appropriate categories. After all, I bought watches in these categories. These watches that I will be discussing, in my opinion, are the coolest choices in the segment. After all, I bought these watches myself. In the sub $250 category, there is but one choice, the G-Shock Metal Cassioke the GM2100. I can hear the Seiko guy stepping up and saying how good Seiko mechanical watches are at this price point. And I do own one, but let's be real. The G-Shock in all its iterations is less than $250. It's a great feature packed watch with world time, a stopwatch, multiple alarms, more than adequate or perhaps even needed water resistance of 200 meters, a seriously cool look, which is almost subtle for a G-Shock. It's amazing and functional whether, whether the recipient of this watch is 16 or 60. While I do have a few minor quibbles with the watch, as you can see in another video of mine in the description below, it's a solidly cool choice for the money and it's new enough in the market to garner some serious attention from the recipient. You can stop all your other purchases after this one. If the 200 to 250 number, dollar number is tough to bear, I can recommend as easily, if not easier, the resin model, the GA2100 1A1. I have that on my wrist right now. This watch can be had for less than $100 before tax. Believe me, with an AP, an IWC, a Patek in my collection, my go-to watch is this G-Shock. In the sub $5,000 range, this is where the competition really heats up. If you have seen my most recent purchase and unboxing video, you know I have bought the IWC Le Petit Prince. There is so much great competition here from Tudor with their Black Bay, some Omega Aquaterra models, which with some polite discussion with the dealer can be had for less than $5,000 or their prestige lines, some Grand Seiko models and their incredible dials and movements. Brightling with their Super Ocean or Avenger models, or perhaps even brands like Nomos and Oris. Here's where it gets interesting though. IWC is a great brand that's rediscovering its pilot watch magic in a more modern format and is really cool again as the watch world is finding out. It's not like a watch brand that was in the spotlight a century ago that's now trying to reinvent themselves. Whether it's the 43 millimeter Big Pilots line or the Le Petit Prince line or pretty much anything in between, IWC is rediscovering itself. The Le Petit Prince line has a brilliant feel that can be dressed up or down 
or can be used for recreational sports. It's what I call the sports hybrid luxury watch. It does not have unnecessary adornments like a dive bezel or chronograph, although some versions of this watch do, or a GMT function. It just does water resistance adequately at 60 meters, which makes it perfect for a surface swim. A modern size, 40 millimeters, a dial to rival anything from Grand Seiko, as I've said before, a cool name. In my opinion, the best features from each great watch brand in this category can be found here. That's why I put my money where my mouth was and bought it. Just look at that dial. This can be worn by all ages of, ages of recipients as it's subtle enough to admire and strong enough to withstand some rough use. Once you're in the rarefied air above $5,000, there are a million different directions you can go. There is, however, just one watch that tells even the most casual watch fan you have the best, the legendary Calatrava from Patek Philippe. Fads come and go, the Calatrava stays. Yes, you can buy a host of watches from different brands. Yes, you can buy something with more functionality, but you're buying the icon here. The watch that started the wristwatch as we know it today. The best brand in the business. Are its specs the best? No. Does it have the most gold? No. Is it gaudy? Most certainly not. Why is it the one I recommend and bought then? The first, the brand, Patek Philippe. You're buying into the family. Second, the detail. The exquisite box it comes in. The simple but elegant dial. The winding of the hands which has a perfect motion the fit and the finish, and lastly, and most importantly, a sense of history and tradition. No, it's not for the youngest of recipients, as if most teenagers were like me, it wouldn't survive. It's like a perfectly stored, rare fine wine of an older vintage or an aged whiskey. It's got the right amount of perfect in ways you can't always describe in your mind, but your heart knows. Plus. Looking at the bottle as it's poured doesn't hurt, which equates to seeing the Patek Philippe name. If you like this video, I can do a video of more price categories, so do let me know if you wish to see that in the comments below. Thanks for watching the channel. I hope you're enjoying the content.